party people. Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Stormer, and this week on the show, I am joined by Whitney Delaglio for a playthrough of her game, Prism. Prism is an aquatic role-playing game about conflict resolution and relationships in an undersea world. Players take on the role of different undersea creatures, members of different aquatic clans, and together you try and solve problems that face your community, but also explore how those problems impact your relationship with one another. This game is beautiful and evocative and just a ton of fun to play, and honestly, Whitney is a ton of fun to play games with. I loved playing this game. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, You should check it out. You can find more information about Prism at littlewishproductions.com or check the show notes for more information. Now, before we dive in, there is one thing that I wanted to share um, because it's my show and I can talk about this stuff if I want. Um, Something pretty amazing happened this past weekend at the time of this uh, episode release. And I figure that I want to share it because I think that y'all might appreciate hearing it. Um, So we produced this podcast back in February, uh, Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast, to tie in with the Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast Indiegogo campaign. It was a four episode miniseries, really star studded cast, really close to all of our hearts. Last weekend, Yazeba screened at New Jersey Web Fest, which is an event that's very close to my heart. It is a film festival celebrating web series, fiction podcasts and actual play productions. And not only did Yazeba screen at the festival, but it also won Outstanding Actual Play Podcast Not Playing D&D at the festival. It won one of their awards, and I remain extremely emotional about that. And not only did the show win Outstanding Actual Play at the festival, it also won Best of the Best, which is the top honors for the entire fiction podcasting division of the festival. Um, I... I'm just really, really emotional about this, and I kind of just needed to say it on mic because I'm really, really excited about it. You can find a link in the show notes to check the show out. If you haven't, it's really great. That's all great. But really, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that listened and supported that show. Thank you to Possum Creek Games for giving us the opportunity to make that show. Uh, Thank you to Jen Frank, the show's editor. She was also nominated for Best Editing. Uh, Thank you to Jeremy Gage, our transcriptionist. Thank you to all of our cast members. Aaron and B and Brennan and Caro and Danny and Gian and Kate and Matt and Michelle and Spencer and Vanna and Viditia. Thank you all so much for making the show a possibility. You know, one of the great things about having your own podcast is that sometimes you get to give a little award speech in the middle of it and get a little emotional. So we're just going to let that happen. That's all. I just really wanted to say thank you to everyone that helped support the show. It was a really great thing. You can find a link to it in the show notes and I'm going to stop rambling. And finally, before we dive in, hi, present Jeff here with a little bit of a plug for the show. So here's the deal. Starting October 1st through the end of the year 2022, we are going to be running a Patreon pledge drive for a pretty simple goal. We'd like to pay our guests more for their time, and Jen and I would like to be paid a little bit for our time in producing the show. Both of those things are immediately achievable through Patreon support. And so we're launching a pledge drive. We're reworking our Patreon and Kofi membership tiers. We've got some exclusive Patreon shows to debut starting in October. And we've got some fun milestone tiers set up, uh, some crossover episodes with other podcasts, some live shows, some first episode pilots to debut, some sequel episodes to Party of One. A lot of cool stuff is in the works and all of it is created in an effort to encourage people to back the Patreon and help us grow the show pay our guests a little bit more for their time, pay ourselves a little bit for our time, and just do more cool shit. And so I hope you'll check those out starting October 1st at patreon.com slash jeffstormer or ko-fi.com slash jeffstormer. All right, let's get back to the show. And with all that said, let's go ahead and throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I am so, so excited to be sitting down with Whitney Delaglia. Whitney, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. Yay! <laughs> uh, so real quick, at the top of the show, why don't you let our listeners know about what we are playing this week, as well as anything else you've got going on that you might want them to know about? Um, we are playing Prism, which was my first self-published game about um, relationships in an aquatic world. And I'm also working on a hack of Lady Blackbird called The Old, The Cold, and The Bold, which is like Uber, but for criminals. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, one of my favorite things about the show is when I get to hear about the cool things that people are working on and it just, it (laughs) brightens my entire day. Uh, that sounds amazing. And I really want to, I really want to read it and play it when it's available. Uh, please, please keep me in mind with these things because that sounds incredible. Um, (laughs) will do. All right. So we are playing Prism. Uh, there is an introduction section to introduce players to the world and the lore and the, 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 the everything of it. And we will... 
uh, read through this introduction, and then we will uh, create our characters and the story that we are telling, and then we'll dive in from there. Um, so I will kick us off by reading uh, uh, our introduction, and we'll hand it back paragraph to paragraph. Once upon a time, there was a barren planet without life, an ocean, or vegetation. Six gods in coalition made the world habitable. Once they gave in life, they lived as mortals until their deaths returning to their godly forms to observe from afar. Their descendants became the peak of this world's hierarchy, outranking those not related by blood. There was to be a royal court, but they were to serve the people. They were, uh, there were to be the highborn, but no one was to live without. Trade was to be healthy, and each realm was to contribute. Scarcities and difficult times were to be dealt with together. This is what the gods wanted the world to be, but that is not what they left behind. The dukes and duchesses disliked being lower in status than the descendants and disapproved of the crown being secured by birthright. The turmoil between those in power led to the people they ruled having no one to keep them in line, and soon they began disrespecting the ideals of their realms and the gods who created them. Though the gods have tr had tried to involve themselves in the world's affairs only indirectly, they saw a need to intervene, and those who misbehaved would soon rue they, the day they infuriated a god. Then there was the incessant fear of the punishment, a deadly contagion with no known remedy, the monument to the unhappiness of the Dark Prince. Raised by spiders that thrived in the snow, the prince was a friend to creatures that hid from the sun. While a young lad, the prince found a tiny princeling trapped beneath a frozen lake. Instead of leaving the little one to freeze, the prince made up his mind to care for him. As time went by, they fell in love. On the day they both came of age, the prince proposed to the pr uh, princeling, but tragedy soon struck. At the wedding, villagers who were afraid of the prince came to end him, but the princeling stood in their way. Their weapons pierced through both the princeling and the prince's hearts, but the gaping hollow in the prince's chest filled itself with malice. That was the day the punishment came into the world, and he became known as the Dark Prince. Now a silhouette, he wanders about the realms, spreading his contagion to those willing hosts who are eager for retribution. In lieu of dreaming of his honeymoon, the princeling searches the realms for his fiancée. To the living, he might appear as a child or an enchanting young man. His hope is to take the prince as a husband and restore his heart to the world so the world can be rid of the punishment and they can finally slumber side by side. So that is the world we are playing in. So we are going to be playing two uh, inhabitants of this of this world and we're going to uh, go on an adventure and explore kind of how our relationship changes throughout those experiences. Um, and for, And as we kind of do that, we should start things off with uh, the tea party, which is how where we're going to kind of get ready to build build out the world that we're playing in a little bit, then we're going to kind of create our characters. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to you. I'm going to give you the wheel and say, uh, walk us through the process. Talk talk us through uh, what we're doing here today. Okay, so um, a quick side note before we make our characters, another um, important fact about the world um, and its culture is that... Um, like gender and sexuality don't really matter in the world of prism. So like women can have the same station as men and people can dress um, how they feel comfortable. And also um, things like sex work are not shamed in prism. So like if you uh, get paid to, to work a pole all day, that's great. My best friend's a baker. You guys should hang out sometime. Love um, it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. So um, the first thing we do in the tea party is um, e um, explore player expectations, just to make sure we're on the same page of what kind of game we want to play. And um, since this is a two-player game, um, it's just me and you, so it's whatever you want. Mm. Um, so I know we talked about um, behind the scenes that you kind of wanted to have like a best friend rival um thing going on is yeah. that still what you want yeah that feels good i i feel like i want i think tonally speaking a little more on the 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 serious emotional side but i think like with it like big adventure is also kind of what i'm feeling like this this the that that's kind of the the energy that i'm i'm feeling exploring in this particular game if you are if you are also cool with that that works for me. Okay. Uh, and that answers my second question, which is what tone you want the game to have. So perfect. Um, uh, another thing is that um, in the introduction, it obviously mentions that there are deities in this mm -hmm. game. Do you want them to be kind of like um, behind the scenes, like occasionally checking in? Or do you want them to have like a 
bigger presence. I I'm open to them having a bigger presence, but I don't necessarily want to like commit I kind I want to I want to maybe like uh explore it and play a little bit, but I'm definitely open to the idea of a god straight up showing up and and uh enacting its will in a very like tangible oh no there's a god in front of us kind of way <laughs> like i don't i don't nece- it doesn't necessarily have to happen but like i am open to that kind of extremely overt uh uh deity influence but uh, but also like behind the scenes stuff is also very compelling cool well um there's a part that's been um added to the um second print run that's going to be happening where at the end of the session uh, we find out how the world reacts to what you did. So if um, even if we don't get to interact with any of the deities, you'll um, get to see that as a kind of like a um, conclusion epilogue kind of thing. I love that. I love that. Um, so um, next question. It, the next question doesn't really apply because it's just you. Um, and it's asking if you're char- if you're comfortable with your character having the spotlight, but you're the only character, so hopefully you're okay with I'm, having I'm, the spotlight. I am I am I am comfortable with this. I am I I will I will reluctantly be okay with this. And the uh, final question is: um, Should your backstories be explored or just inform character choices? I'm more interested in inform like backstories informing character choices and being a. Uh, not necessarily like an overt thing, but if something from a backstory comes up in a big way and it needs to be explored, I think that's really that's really compelling. Okay, cool. All white. Um, so we're gonna be jumping into um character gen next, and I'll be asking you questions as we start. Uh, just a one uh, follow up question because this is um more of a the, the entire table question. Um, is um. How comfortable are you with like intimate stuff? Intimate stuff is okay. okay. I think I'm alright with that. Okay, just just to be on the safe side. Yep. Always appreciate always appreciate the uh, asking. Always appreciate checking in. But yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with it. Okay. And follow up question to that because we're um, the next section would be to talk about the X card. Is is there any content you want off the table completely other than my default, which is no sexual violence and no um, harm to children or animals? Uh, mine are exactly verbatim the same. Uh, a veil. I, I'd love a veil on eye and teeth related injuries. I think for the purposes of this game, but maybe not necessarily a hard line on it, because I, I think the idea of the punishment is really like interesting and compelling. But I, I think a a veil on like plague related illness and like plagues and pandemics as a as a as a, a veil to a line is something that I I I. I like the idea of like a magical malignant presence, but like seeing people get sick is something that I'm not interested in, like specifically exploring. Right. Yeah. Usually with the punishment, um, unless we discuss it ahead of time, it just ends up being like they're they have the punishment and they're super aggro right now. So they're just I like, don't talk to me. You're not my dad. I learned it from you, et cetera, That's et cetera, fine. That's, et that's, that's gorgeous. I absolutely love that. Yeah. I just, uh, Ill- illness stuff is a is a is a veil to a line understood all right so first we're gonna go over the realms okay. um, i'm gonna pretend you don't have the rules in front of you great um there are six realms to choose from uh you get to pick one of them and it's basically the realm you either came from or you live currently or the place where you learned how to do your job um first is the blue realm which is the ocean that surrounds the other five islands um they are known for efficiency and chivalry um they provide the most seafood and and um decorative arts and musicians it's where the king and queen live and um the god that watches over that realm is the god of the sea and he's kind of like that he's kind of like the fairy godmother little bunny foo foo words like listen Mm -hmm. i told you three times now don't bop the field mice guess who's becoming a goon Mm. (laughs) <laughs> i love that and um they value yielding to avoid blood and respecting enemies and they um, resent favoring unkind ethics and abandoning allies um the next one is the gold realm it's kind of like a beachside paradise um a lot of kids live there who um either don't have parents or had uh, parents that weren't the best people and um, they're watched over like by chaperones called guardians that kind of prepare them um, until they're old enough to move out and have happy lives. Um, 
uh, they're responsible for the most tropical fruits, eggs, and dairy. And the god that watches over that realm is the god of life. And he's like a like a dad mom almost mm-hmm. at this a combo of both. And um, they value looking out for others and use his gracious manners. And they resent hunting for sport and harming the helpless. Um, third is the most popular realm for some reason, because I guess everyone wants to be a pompous asshole, is the green <laughs> is the green realm, which is basically the, this is where all the forests and crops are, for the most part, realm, where all the fancy pants people live. There's the crops, there's theater, there's precious gems. Um, the uh, goddess of the forest watches over that realm. Uh, she's, po- she's very fancy pants and poised and curt. Uh, they uh, value putting familiar op- familial obligations first and showing decorum. They resent losing your temper and showing concern for strangers. They're a very small circle of social circle kind of people. Mm. Um, fourth is the uh, if Republicans actually practice what they preached realm, <laughs> which, is the, <laughs> which is the orange realm. So it's like people who like work hard and, and then work harder because play hard is for peasants uh and but they're more than happy to help people who are falling on hard times there's lots of volcanoes that there because for some reason even though i love underwater i love volcanoes almost I mean, as vol- much volcanoes <laughs> rip is the thing volcanoes they rule <laughs> they, they they really do um the goddess of the sun watches over that realm uh she's known for being straightforward and motherly uh, the realm values walking off an injury and committing to a task, and they resent refusing to aid ones in need and freeloading. Mm. Uh, the fifth realm is my favorite realm because it's the non-toxic bro c- culture realm, the Rouge realm, which is basically a, a 24-7 party hard, but party responsibly hydrate first, bro. Gotta realm. hydrate. It's more- <laughs> hydrate. You gotta hydrate. Uh, that's where most of the love hotels and lounges and nightclubs are. It's watched over by the goddess of blood, who is um, known for being cheerful and optimistic. They value living in the moment um, because YOLO is outdated at this point and indulging in pleasures. And they resent mistreating your brethren and being cruel. And last but not least, it's the spooky, scary violet realm. It's um, home to mostly the nocturnal silhouettes of the dead and creatures that prefer the night. Um, It has a small population uh, the god that watches over that realm is the god of the moon, who is somber and soft-spoken. Uh, they value showing respect to the sick and the deceased, and they resent acting out to due to insensitive preconceptions. So they are a very woke realm. Uh, out of those six, which one appeals to you? I've been so the the two that really jump out to me are blue and orange. But I've been on a big like I've been on a big night fiction kick lately. Like I've been re- like I've been been really i've been really vibing with like uh like night stories and so i feel like i i'm i'm really feeling the blue realm i like that kind of i i i'm i'm getting a lot of image of you know the that sort of uh that sort of uh that nightly courtly kind of energy is is i'm really kind of gravitating towards it i dig it yeah as as a in real life paladin i'm, I'm like yes That's i the- totally want to be courted by some highly nightly person you know it, it it's it's just it's where i don't it's just kind of where my head has been at lately so that's kind of the the one that the mo- i'm most excited about so i think i i think i hail from the blue realm cool all right um so that will be your loyalty um your favorite skill we'll get to that in a bit um but just keep in mind the um realm values and resentments are something you want to keep in mind for how your character is going to behave in the mm. game mm-hmm a white uh next is template it kind of gives your character a little flavor text this section only has four options so it's a little easier or rather rather less time consuming um the first one is primal which means you were like i love my realm so much it's the best realm i love living here i never want to be anywhere else ever um you take your values of your realm and your family very seriously uh, but you're not zealots because of their those are lame except the ones from uh bioshock infinite because murder of crows is the best figure ever sidetrack uh (laughs) your bonus is that your um favored realm gets a bit of a experience boost so you're super good at the skill your realm favors the second is guardian so you're kind of like Auron from ff10 you're like a bit older 
You've been around the block a few times, but now you want to show the younger kids how it's done, but like in a respectful way, obviously. You're not mm-hmm. a boomer. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you're it kind of, it's kind of like my play on the Paladin almost. Um, and your trait is that you get wings, which I think is cool. Mm-hmm. I love character with wings. Um, third is the infected. Um, they are infected with the punishment. Um, uh, their trait is that, um, if they become threatened and then wish to escalate the situation, they get initiative because they are basically 24 seven in come at me bro mode. Uh, last but not least is nocturnal. They are people that, um, obviously, uh, prefer the nighttime. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are kind of like the, uh, opposites of the, um, infected because they get an initiative. They wish to de-escalate a situation and they're like attuned to the afterlife, but, but they're also pretty chill. They don't really make any exaggerate their feelings. It's basically not me because I exaggerate everything. (laughs) Um, out of those four, what's, what's speaking to you? The two that really jumped out to me were the infected and the guardian. And I think I'm going to go with a guardian. It's a, it, it feels like it feels it's in my, it's in my wheelhouse. I love, I love the, I love characters that are three days from retirement. It's my, <laughs> it's my favorite, it's my favorite trope. And I love the idea. I like the idea of someone that has, it, it gives me big, uh, it gives, I mean, I am, I am nothing if not a sucker for superhero stories of all kinds. And that vibe of the person that has been devoting themselves to sort of the ideals of the, the sort of blue court of, like, of, of chivalry and, and kind of protecting people and, you know, that, that sort of person who's been at that, 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 that life and that calling for a very long time is, uh, is an energy that I'm very excited to to explore further. Okay, so very important follow up question to that. Do do your wings have armor? <laughs> um, I think they I the 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 uh, they are armor is the only way that I can describe them. I'm picturing a little bit of nice. Archangel from the X Men, like yeah, that sort of like they are they are they are they are wings that like are the armor and they kind of like come down that really cool kind of wrap around chest plate effect. Like mm-hmm. they kind of come down and wrap in front of me to form a bit of a chest plate. That's I love it. I love it. I love it so much. All right. Step three is family, which is the biologically accurate term because we're dealing with kind of like mostly humanoid planish animalish mm-hmm. people. Um, the This is a six choice one. Again, the first one is the chameleon. They are not like the chameleon animal with the segmented eyes and that change colors for not mood reasons or so I've been told. Uh, they have a uh, pearly white skin. Um, they like um, showing off to crowds and audiences because they're kind of like uh, cantrip spell casters almost, but um, spell casting in prism is all, is all elemental. So like fire, water, sand, stuff like that. So um, as a chameleon, you would be able to cast minor elemental spells of your chosen element. Uh, next is, uh, plant folk. Uh, they don't all come from the green realm, but a lot of them do. Um, again, they have small social circles. Strangers are all dead to them. Uh, they have the, they're kind of like, almost like a sexy Groot, almost, mm-hmm. uh, have the, like the attributes of a tree or a, a flower or a plant. Obviously they have very high, e- uh, big egos. Um, next is kind of like their opposite, uh, weed folk, not 420 weed, uh, more like uh, thorny vines and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of like the more the like the the brawnier, older or younger sibling of the plant folk. Uh, they like doing tasks that involve their muscles, clearly like showing off the how swole they are. But they like they're like little uh, cuddle bunnies as well. And just an, uh just a rewind, plant folk. Their uh, skill is that they can ignore emotional pain because showing emotion that are that is anything other than it, uh, other than being polite is beneath them. And weed folk are the opposite; they can ignore physical pain because they're just going to walk it off. Mm. Uh, then it's barbed fish. Uh, they can turn it into a, either a tiny cephalopod, jellyfish, lionfish, or seahorse. A very tiny one, like baby hand size, small. Um, they prefer um, the arts over combat. They like doting on people. They're very thoughtful and they're very cute. Um, second to last is sea mammal. They are sort of like merfolk that can clap on, clap off their legs. Uh, they're um, 
fish half is a um, sea mammal, so like a dolphin or a porpoise or a seal or a whale. Um, they like singing. They like uh, they're very care- carefree and easygoing. And last but not least is the toothfish. So kind of like the blue realm per- personified almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, they like um, they are very into camaraderie. Uh, they're courteous, even though they have like all the teeth in the universe. And um, they turn into the half of a eel or a ray or skate or shark. Mm. What are you feeling? I am feeling, I think the, the thing, I'm, I'm jumping between a lot of them. I think the thing that I'm most feeling, I love, I, I think I want to make, I think I want to make my character a barbed fish. Barbed I fish. Like, I like, the, the, the bioluminescence on just as a detail is very, is very, uh, that, that really seals the deal for me. <laughs> that sort of like sea glow is very cool. And I, I like that. I enjoy and I, I like this idea of I like this idea of of this character that I've in my head cast as sort of a sort of a brawny person, like kind of that it, it feels it feels compelling to kind of have them be somebody who would who would sooner somebody who would who would in another life be an artist, but has sort of taken on this role to protect people because they see it as their duty. Oh, that's dwarves. I love it. Okay, so um, what tiny little thing do you turn into? Uh, oh, it's a seahorse. It's got to be a seahorse. The seahorse yeah. is very good. I love it. Okay. Um, so the final choosy thing mm-hmm. is vocation, which is your, your profession. Six to choose from. Um, first is the brawler, which is pretty self-explanatory. They solve problems by punching them. Uh, their skill is that, um, if they take physical pain, they can heal a equal amount of mo- emotional pain because it hurts so good. Um, they usually are a bouncer or an escort or something like that, or, a, um, a, some kind of protecting person or just street fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, next is, is their opposite, which is the diplomat. They solve problems with diplomacy. Um, but unlike in both uh, D and D situations, their diplomacy actually freaking works. Uh, I'm not bitter at all. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't imagine why. <laughs> um, they get to ignore um the consequences of curses on occasion. We'll explain what curses are in a bit, but basically, it's like if you do something that the realm doesn't like. Um, they do amb- ambassadorial stuff, and um, next up is the hunter. It's not really it's not really a game hunter. It's more like living off the land kind of hunter. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, they uh, prefer living by themselves and living off the land or the sea, depending on where they live. And uh, their talent is that they can uh, take a a task that's like um, kind of on the difficult side and make it easier because they've you know been alone so long that they've honed their skills. They're like, don't worry, I got this. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is the mage, and um, as we explained earlier with the chameleon, uh, they do um, elemental enchantments, but they can do all of them because they're a mage, and they've devoted their lives to doing all kinds of elemental stuff. Um, and it, the, um, there's not really, like, quote-unquote spells in this game. It's more like, I want to do a thing with lava, and then I tell them how difficult that might be. Sure. Um, then is the medic. They uh, make boo-boos better. And they sometimes um, um, work alongside diplomats because they have a high insight or rather sense or sense motive for the the D and D folks at home. Um, their skill is healing boo boos. Mm-hmm. Uh, next is Picaroon, which is an actual word that a friend helped me find deep within a thesaurus. <laughs> love it. Uh, I'm sorry. I said I love it. Yeah. Um, they are kind of like the people that do under the table tasks that no one else wants to do, which means they're kind of lonely sometimes because people don't want to hang out with them. Um, their talent is opposite to a brawler where if they feel emotional pain, they can heal an equal amount of physical pain. Which of those six is appealing to you? The one that, the one that immediately like the most jumps out. I was going back and forth between brawler and diplomat, but I think diplomat is the one that I'm most excited about. I think that's the... It's the energy that I want to bring to this character. I, it's it feels it feels right. It feels right for who they are. Cool. Yep. I mean, even though this game's supposed to be like not really high combat, brawler is like honestly no joke. My favorite, my favorite profession. 
for reasons, because even though I like playing the character that's like, I love you and I'll love you forever and I want to be nice to everybody. I also want to play the character that'll be like, I will kick you through a wall if mm-hmm. you fuck with me. <laughs> I it's you know, there's 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 a there's a real joy to that. And that's why I was I was I was going back and forth. I was like, it's gotta be one of these two, but I think for me it is it is the the diplomat is the, the type of story and character that I wanna I really want to play with. Cool. All right. So uh, next up is skills. Um, skills are what you do use to do things in the game. And since this is a diceless game, we're just going to um, uh, make your experience in each of these six skills uh, zero to however maximum you can be, depending on how things work out. Uh, the six skills are aptitude, which is basically the Dis- Disney princess skill, which is like dancing, singing, mm-hmm. uh, rousing crowds. There's dexterity. Uh, climbing, stealth, acrobatics. There's etiquette, uh, following protocol with charm, deceit, or spite. Um, insight, um, which is um, identifying moods of others, mastering lore, and spotting deceit. Uh, there's might, which is everything that involves being swole, including intimidation. And survival, which is like cooking, persisting, seafaring, and um, spot checks. Hmm. Um, so, uh, I, do you have a character sheet in front of you? I do indeed. Okay. So since you are loyal to the blue realm, you start off with a three in dexterity. Yes. And since you are a diplomat, you start with a, uh, an etiquette of two. Yes. An etiquette of two. I know the rules of my game. <laughs> I believe me. If if you do, that makes you that makes you better than me because I've don't. had. To, I can, sometimes I blank. <laughs> I have never sat down and played a game that I've written and, and not had to at least look at the rules once and go, "What the hell am I doing right now?" Yeah. Um, and then so I then am picking one of my skills to be at a plus zero, and then yep. the rest of them will be at a plus one. Yes. I think. Let me look at my list of skills again. I've got it down to a few. Um. I think I'm going to put a survival of zero. Okay. I think survival of zero, everything else one. I I, 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 I like that doesn't love to trap, like, is very much a a hometown hero. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going, I'm going with, uh, with he, his pronouns. I think that he does not like to, like to travel. I think he does not like to travel. I think that he does not like to, uh... I think he he so I think that 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 survival skill I think like kind of the things that that sort of uh, uh, surround that you know seafaring tracking uh, all of these things like they're they're things that he trusts someone else to do <laughs> and I think that's kind of the 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 feel of it I think it is a lot of a lot of uh, it, you 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 put a bunch of food in front of him and he go it's I, I can boil water. That's probably easy, and that outside of that, I'll figure something out. And you know, I, I, it's important to have friends because friends can do the things for you that you'll that you have no idea how to do. <laughs> cool. All right. And um, uh, for the final step, you get to pick one skill, except for the one you marked at zero, and add a one to it, whichever one you want. I am going to add a one to might. Nice. So then my physical endurance is the total of my aptitude, dexterity, and might. So my aptitude is one, two, three, so six physical, uh, six physical endurance, and one, uh, three emotional endurance. Okay, cool. All right. So, um... So next in character gen is that um, since this is a, a two player game, um, you're you will be in a relationship in the game. You start out with mm. one. And since it's just the two of us, your relationship will be with an NPC because I will be playing them. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did talk about how you want to have a best friend rival thing, which is which is great. And I'm like, I'm not going to make this like Berserk because that's totally toxic and horrible. That's true. It, 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 I mean, if it's still being serious adventure, but it's like, I don't like that that chemistry at all. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it makes me so sad. Anyway, tangent. Um, <laughs> um, do you have an idea like who you want them to be or where you want them to be from or like why your rivals? I so now that we're kind of like we're we're in we're kind of like deep in the 
the sort of, like, nightly fiction vein, the idea of, like, another person from, like, another kind of guardian, whether they are sort of a younger upstart or, like, similarly of my age that I've just been (laughs) butting heads with for years, the idea of, like, this other character uh, and I kind of butting heads to do all of the things... In that space of, like, we would be best friends, but we each feel like we have to fill the same role in the story, and so it's that constant sense of whoever gets there first is the the person that does the thing. (laughs) And, you know, it ultimately, ultimately, like, there's a respect there, because we know that, 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 like, good deeds are getting done, but there's a distinct urge, uh, there's a distinct feeling of, of, why are you, why are you stepping on my toes? Gotcha. I'm All trying right. to decide if it's more interesting if it's a young upstart or somebody that I've been butting heads with for a long time. So um, to help answer that question, hopefully. Um, so like, how does your character usually solve problems? Like if there's like, you know, a fight or just a dispute? I mean, you're, you're a diplomat, right? So like, how do you how do you solve your diplomatic uh, ambassadorial problems? I like a sense of camaraderie. I like that sort of that sort of sense of of uh it's kind of a communal we're all in this together i think i i think like i said a hometown the the hometown hero energy of like i kind of know everybody Mm -hmm. right like i kind of one of like i am this is this is my neighborhood my my home like the the space that i naturally inhabit it is i know everybody i have history with everybody and i think leaning on that history and kind of saying it's it's that sense of Hey, didn't we just go to a didn't we just go to a ball game like last week? Like are you really going to have a problem with me? Like and I think like it's the sense of like if somebody is being is being bullied or harmed or if there's like an actual threat, like I will I will shoulder up and throw a haymaker, but for the most part I I kind of I love the picture of the trope of the person that is so tough and scary that they have no need not to be nice. It's kind of the the big dog energy of where yeah. you're so large and you're so and you're so powerful that like your only option is to be kind and friendly and I, so I like that as the sense of like I am this intimidating figure and if I have to turn that on and be intimidating and scary and like if I've got to throw a hand if I've got to throw hands I can throw hands but for the most part I am just I am the big scary friend that sits quietly with someone when they need someone big and scary to sit quietly with them and then I check in with them after and we go get we go get milkshakes how are you playing the character i usually i don't know i I don't i don't know maybe it's that we just play the same character (laughs) yeah or i play the horn dog i mean it depends on how i'm feeling that day but fair okay so i'm feel i'm thinking and of course we we can we can cater this to, to to what you like i'm thinking of okay so they're obviously gonna be a diplomat too because you're you're kind of like doing the same thing but I think like and and I'm probably going to be like this. Is, luckily, this is editing, so I'm probably going to be like I'm probably not saying this way that it makes sense. Um, I almost want to have them be a um a diplomat from the Red Realm, so it's like they still get the job done, but it's kind of like in a way where it's like they either like like hit on the person or kind of like you know get them you get them like you know like um like riled up, but like in a good way. Mm. And because it sounds like like you're you're like 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 a mellow diplomat. Where it's I like, like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I I like that. It's kind of the it, it, it's a it's the it's the buddy dynamic of the of of chill and chill and calm and then kind of and then hot headed and suave is like a good dynamic. And it's it, it gives us a nice rivalry where like we don't solve problems in the same way. Like yeah. I'm kind of very I'm kind of very you know we 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 we. We treat people with respect, like we, we we keep people at an arm's length, and this and my my rival is kind of like, yeah, I get I get I get into it. I you know I it's it, it it feels very I like that energy a lot. It's kind of a it, it I I I get a lot of chaotic energy from my rival, <laughs> and I, I I really enjoy that. Okay, um, I would like to make them a chameleon that um does minor. Um, inferno spells which is fire and lava what, what do you think about that that's cool as hell cool okay excellent day all right so um since we uh kind of have like a, a character going um for both of us 
Uh, now we decide our relationship and how we feel about each other. Um, so we both have a relationship track. Um, and it's our track is re- uh, representing how we feel about the other person, not how we both feel about each other. So it could be like, ne- uh, like there could be like a positive and negative where it's like, why mm-hmm. won't Senpai notice me? Or it could be like negative, negative, where we're both like, I hate you forever. I never want to see you again, but we're here together. So, uh, ugh, gross. Um, so, uh, what are you thinking? Because I know we're rivals, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't really mean we hate each other, right? So, I, the vibe, the what I want to throw out is that I don't like them and they like, there's a, there's an old Simpsons gag where a character walks up to Lisa Simpson and says straight up, I don't like you and you don't like me. And she goes, I like you. And that's the vibe that I get. It's very much like, <laughs> I don't like you. You don't, like, I have this carved in my head and they're just like, I, I, I like you a whole lot. What you, you're saying you don't like me. And I'm like, well, no, I, I don't, I don't dislike you, but I, you know, it's like, I think I, I think I, I, I think I kind of like, pre- it, it's a little bit of, I pretend not to like them, but like they, they irritate me, but they are the, they are the one person that gets to irritate me. Okay. So um, that means we get different bonuses. Um, so right. since yours is negative and mine is positive, uh, while you are caught up in yourself, you take double emotional pain, but you cannot become preoccupied by anything else. And we'll just dis- mm. d- discuss what pre- preoccupied means in a second. Um, cause you're just so frustrated with the relationship. Cause it's like, you, you know, you, you dislike me, but we're, we're, we're in it to win it. So there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> um, and since mine is positive and yours is uh, negative, um, well, I tried to, um, to get you to notice me, my experience on the current task doubles, but so does emotional pain I take. So we're both taking <laughs> emotional pain, which is great because yours is not that good. And uh, mine's probably not going to be that good either, considering I'm both the Rouge so. Great. Great. Oh, God. This is going uh, to be great. Okay. <laughs> um. Awesome. All right. So uh, let's continue on so we can explain the mechanics that matter. Okay. Um, Discuss like how you do a thing when it comes to that, uh, Mm -hmm. when it comes to that. So we're not like bombarding with a bunch of mechanics. Um, The important thing to know is since we both have, we're probably going to be both on the low emotional range is that when you run out of emotional pain, you can tolerate, you become preoccupied. It is not like a status ailment in Final Fantasy where if you don't have a soft and you're petrified, you're fucked. It's basically how you feel at the time. And if you don't, if you feel like you're not feeling that way anymore, it usually goes away. But in your case, we'll figure that out as we play. It but it basically just means that um, when you're preoccupied, anything you do is a little bit harder because you're uh, preoccupied. Sure. Um, initiative, we'll get into that if it comes up. Um, and uh, and since you already um, spearheaded endurance, I'll just go into it like real quick. Um, there's physical endurance and, and emotional endurance. Uh, physical is getting slapped in the face and emotional is like someone coming up to you and saying i hate your face so uh, but this isn't like a game where you're constantly getting like like walloped so most of the time you're only get, gonna get pinged for one or one anything more than that and like something must be like going super wrong for you that day and if you run out of physical endurance you become imp- incapacitated you don't die you're just like you're out you can't do anything until you're you've been um you've been healed and uh becoming threatened is a thing that might come up um in the game which we will discuss as it comes along it's basically like if you're playing D, you'd be rolling initiative but there's no addition of this game because it's diceless then there's blessing and curses which matters to both of us because we are diplomats uh blessing is basically when you do something that your realm really likes uh which in your case is the blue realm like okay like like if someone you um, who is your um, enemy uh, comes up to you and he's like, "Look, I just want to call a truce. We've both lost. We both lost too many p- good people." You'd be like, you're, "You're right. I could use the opportunity to stab you, but I won't." And then mm-hmm. the blue and then the blue go- goddess, you'd be like, "That's dope." From now, on, from the rest of the scene, anything you do with dexterity, you do it with flying colors. It's great. Love but it. let's say um, let's rewind, and you're like, "No, I don't want a truce." I hate you and I hope all you people die then your uh, uh daddy of the sea is gonna be like i'm i'm not mad i'm just disappointed and anything you do with dexterity automatically does not turn out the way you want to until you made up for what you did or do something to cancel it out that's great love it 
But since we are diplomats, we can occasionally be like, uh, whoops. And they'll be like, okay, I'll look this, the other way this time, this time. <laughs> and I think that's everything we need to cover right now. But just one more thing is that um, something that might come up that's um, in the rule book is the restless dead, which are silhouettes, which is your, the, a dead person's spiritual shadow which is what pops up if they die and had some unfinished business or something like that. Um, mm. It's a, everyone knows about them. It's not like a mystery. It's just that so there are some people who are like, Oh, a dead thing. And there's some people like, Oh, a dead person. Tell me what's your problem right now. Or let me tell you and stuff like that. They might come up in the game, depending on what happens. And the next part is game master stuff. So it don't matter right this moment. So, um, do you have any questions? I do not. I think I'm looking at the time. I think that we've got time to to do like a, a short scenario if we want to do that and just condense the uh, kick, just kick things off, play through a little bit of a short scenario, do some 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 interplay between our characters, and kind of grapple with a little bit of a problem. I think that would be. I think that's the perfect follow up. Cool. All right. So, uh, important thing. Uh, so we already know. That your pronouns are he and him. But what is their name? <laughs> uh, his name, I just wrote this down. His name is Lancer Whirlpool. Lancer Whirlpool. Lancer, uh, he, his pronouns is older, uh, takes the form of a seahorse, uh, has beautiful sort of metallic wings that wrap around his chest that can sort of burst out when he wants to take flight. And uh, Lancer is, I think... A little bit of uh, a little uh, the vibe that I get from Lancer is a little bit uh, as silly as it's going to sound is a little bit Santa Claus is a little bit that kind of <laughs> old man like the kind of old man that everybody in town knows and like has a lot of like has a friendly relationship with like everybody in his sort of community. Cool. All right. Hmm. Names are hard. Okay. Uh. My uh, diplomat is she, her, and their name is Sandra, because that's the first name that came to mind. Mm. Uh, some people call her Sandy, even though she's not from a Sandy area at all, because she literally uh, made her home inside the belly of a volcano. She's like, I can tolerate the heat, so I'm just going to fucking do it. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, where does your character live? I mean, obviously in the Blue Realm, but... <sighs> I think it is a. Uh, I think it is a, a a coral reef, like a coral reef um, community. Like there are homes kind of carved into a, a coral reef, roughly the size of a of a of a small a small mountain or or hill. Like it is a it is a ginormous uh, like reef like superstructure that has a bunch of like homes carved into it. That I think like there is a town or a community or a like a group or a hamlet of like uh that 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 is where this character kind of lives in okay cool so i'm gonna say so we have like some common ground is that you know obviously all the realm the realms are other than the blue realm are surrounded by water so we'll say like off the rouge realm island proper are some of uh, submarine volcanoes yeah that rips those are, my, those are my absolute favorite yes i know right um so that's where sandra lives and like every time it's like it's like clockwork she comes out of her volcano and it's like almost like hexis and fern gully doing toxic love only it's like steam and lava <laughs> love it very cool and some people roll their eyes at it and some people are like i'm oddly aroused right now and some people are like neutral depends some on people some people are a little bit of both <laughs> yeah 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 totes um all right so um should they is it uh so we're, okay we're having this be an adventure thing so like is there like a diplomatic crisis you're working on or do you want to like run into something or i think the scenario that i kind of want to there's a the, the i kind of want to jump right into sort of a uh kind of a crisis point and sort of play through the the resolution of that because having created these characters i think the most interesting thing is to be presented with a problem and then watch these two characters sort of <laughs> figure things out in very kind of conflicting ways okay so i think there is uh we've got volcanoes we've got uh we've got a coral reef we've got some submarine volcanoes 
I think there is like a crisis that is unfolding that has put both of our respective kind of uh, realms in a degree of danger. Okay. Um, and I think what that is is – what is what is an interesting crisis that kind of is happening right in sort of the middle of these two spaces? I mean, the first thing to come to mind would be a a sort of natural disaster, but I don't know if I if that is a nice thing to go into, considering global warming is kind of like taking a dump on planet Earth right now. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm not opposed. I'm not a, here's. I'm thinking. I'm I'm thinking what I'd like to maybe throw out along those lines because I think that is I like it not being I like there not being uh, an easy answer like I like it not being a thing with like a direct and pointable villain is maybe it is like a colossal uh, a colossal uh, thing from the from the from the deep deep okay. Some real giants, some real giant squid energy ah. is like has come and is like is like has a, has kind of arrived and is like floating about and is is lashing about. But it's not necessarily that it has it is not necessarily attacking. Right. Like it's not malicious, but it is just large and ancient and kind of at a scale where we barely register to it. And it has sort of just become misplaced or displaced and has sort of just arrived in our respective spaces and its presence has put people in danger, but it's just, just this sort of gigantic skyscraper sized squid <laughs> in our respective spaces. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, sounds like we're kind of taking from the web comic that came before the game that never got finished, but it had like a giant a, a squid, but that giant squid was basically like a, bunch of angry spirits that became a giant squid that was um like all like um punishment related completely um so it's more like a like like the ma like those malice things in video games like oh it's a giant spirit of anger and destruction and blah 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 blah, blah. but it sounds like it's kind of like it's not necessarily angry it's just like I, it woke up from its it, the alarm kind of made it cranky and um or or what what are you thinking is, is that that's what you i'm just making sure i'm on the same page um, the vibe that I'm getting is, I think it is, it is, it is, I love the spirits idea. I love the idea. I'm I'm pulling hard on the idea that this is a, a thing of spirits that have swirled around and have formed into this kind of like eldritch being, right? Like this uh -huh. idea that this thing is a swirling mass of spirits that maybe already like have have reached their natural end like they're not necessarily silhouettes they are the spirits that but like there is they have just kind of swirled together to form this this entity right in a way that maybe nobody fully understands okay and it's not it's kind of through it's it's not necessarily like attacking but it's just the way that it moves, like if it swings one of its if it swings one of its tentacles, it's gonna crush it's gonna crush two houses in the coral reef. If it swings in another direction, it's gonna it's gonna like hit the side of one of these volcanoes. And so okay. it's this level of like of like we have to figure this out. We have to understand what this is and figure out how to kind of get it back where it came from, back to its natural habitat. Okay. But also but also uh it's not necessarily a like it's it's a problem that can't necessarily be we pick up our we pick up our our our, our swords and we and we 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 it's not we we don't ring the bell and get and and drop an elbow on it because like a we don't fully know what it is b it would destroy us in an instant and c it's not really like maliciously attacking anything it's kind of just existing in this place where it's not usually okay so it sounds like since we're in neighboring areas we kind of have some blue folk we kind of have some red uh, rouge folk and it's kind of like a a like a town hall meeting sort of so to speak and um i'll let you tell me how the blue realm folks are reacting but i feel like the um rouge realm uh they're i mean they're they're not at the point where they're taking it super seriously because some of them are like oh man they're probably just it's just probably just having like a really bad hangover and some of them are like kind of like acting like like legally blonde almost where it's like oh does it have to happen now we're mm -hmm. gonna like it's gonna mess up my you know my keg party tomorrow 
Oh, uh, I think the blue realm. I think the people. I think the 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 court of the blue realm is taking this very very seriously. Like <laughs> the this the sort of uh the sort of uh it, there's a lot. It is a lot of very concerned. You know, like it is like uh we are in danger. We have to like solve this, and it's not quite at the. It's not quite at pitchforks yet. It's not quite at torches and pitchforks. But there is like a distinct sense of we got to do something about this, and we got to do something about it now. Like this is a. This thing is, this thing is, like, even, like, is attacking, like, we are perceiving it as attacking, and we are, we are, we are, we are, we are ready to do what is necessary, and there's a, there's a certain degree of kind of talking that down. I think that the, 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 the responsibility of kind of talking down that sort of, uh, angry mob has kind of fallen onto Lancer's shoulders a little bit, as he's kind of out in front of this, of this, of this group of people, kind of like hands in front of him like let's let's not act hasty let's not we're not we're not you know we can we can handle this rationally this is not something that needs to be this does not need to be a fight this is not this is this is there's there's other ways that we can handle this okay so um let's have you do a thing so since you already explained that you're kind of like a everybody knows everybody kind of kind of guy um let's say that um this would be a typical task for you because while they're 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 very close to uh, getting their torches ready, uh-huh. they all know you and they trust you to you know lead them in the right direction. So we'll uh, you will need an experience of three in the thing that you think would apply to the situation, which would probably be um, um, whatever you think uh, would be best. And if you um, have more than enough experience um, because you can um, negotiate using two skills to do a thing. Uh, you it ends up uh, working out even better for you than just you know having you do the thing in general. I think the thing to go with here is probably etiquette. Like I'm probably talking these things through. I'm probably like th- this is probably a degree of kind of uh, like convincing people to like convincing people there's an element of charm here there's an element of you know reminding people like this is not this is not how we operate this is not this is not what the god of our realm like believes in we are not we are not we are not drawing blades and rushing at things willy-nilly that is not the world that is not the world that we inhabit that is not the that is not the god that we serve that is not anything to do with us and i think it's a it's a degree like that's kind of the the approach of like you know how how did how would you have felt if if this mob had showed up at your door when (laughs) you were when you were scared and wandering around looking for a place to rest and i do not have three uh i do not have three in etiquette but i can take on a complication and Uh, i think that's sorry go ahead you should. Oh yeah, because you don't have an etiquette too. Do you think there's any other skill you could apply to this, or do you want the complication? I kind of want the complication. Okay. Uh, is there a complication you? And this is supposed to be a, usually a negotiation. So is there anything you're you're Jones in to have happen? I think what I'd like, because I think this is going to put put us right in kind of the into kind of the action of it. Okay. Is I love the idea that like maybe there is like an elder in the community that's like okay. Then go fix it. You're the <laughs> you're the you're the guardian. You go do it. Like if like you can either do it yourself or we can all do it for you. Oh man, you're being a total dick right now, bro. That's probably what <laughs> Sandra's saying right now. I, and I, I I think that I hear I think I hear San, I think Sandra says something to that effect, and I just put my head in my hand like, is Sandy going to be the only person? Of, of course, of course, she's going to be the only person that I'm going to be able to work with here. That's <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We will, we will, we will find a way to resolve this peacefully. There will be no need for bloodshed today. Okay. Uh, are you taking emotional damage for Sandy, like having to call that guy out? I think so. That feels good. Okay, so you're taking two emotional damage because it's, right. it's double the pain because the person you dislike is is doing your job for you. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. That puts me down to one emotional endurance. Okay, you're you're still there. You're still there. I'm still in it. I'm still in it. I'm still in it. Um, 
And so I kind of spin on my heels a little bit. I think my wings kind of flourish out from being wrapped around my chest to being behind my back. I, uh, I, I picture that I have maybe a, maybe a lance or like a, or like a, like an Urgrosh with the axe on one hand and the spear on the other. Right. Yeah. I read the D and D player's handbook once upon a time. I know my, <laughs> I know my weird weapons. Um, I, I, I kind of picture that's what I have and I kind of swirl around and I swallowing the pride it's going to take to ask the question. Sandy, I think we need to find a way to get this thing to move. And I, 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 I do believe that I'm going to have to ask you for help here. I think it's better that we handle this directly than everyone else, because these folks are pretty too eager to fight. And, and I look over her shoulder. Those folks don't quite seem really eager to do anything. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. But it's cool. It's cool. I mean... We're just we just know when something some problems are too you know big for us to chew. But luckily, I have a big bite, so we can handle this, bro. No problem. All right, I I I I, I you know what? No, I'm not saying it yet. I'm not saying I'm not. No, I don't. I don't. I don't believe in you. Not yet. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> are you Let's saying just, that out loud? <laughs> I think I'm mum. I think I'm mumbling it to myself. Probably still, maybe loud enough for Sandy to hear it. Like, uh. Let's just let's just do the thing. Let's just let's just go do the thing. Cool. Let's make it happen. So what is what is Sandra's what is Sandra's approach to to addressing this issue? Like what is what are, what are, what are each of our like ideas on how we kind of get this giant squid, this giant soul squid to move out of our spaces? So real talk, and you probably might know this in character because you unf- regrettably worked with her in the past, probably, is that sometimes, I mean, she, uh, like, there are some things that she doesn't have on her character sheet um, solutions for, but she is very good at faking it until she makes it. And, like, as she says, let's get to it, you can see that, like, fake it until you make it, like, tight smile on her face because she's like i don't know what to do about a fucking giant squid i i think that and i think i i think ironically i think going back to the idea that we would be best friends i think the second that i see that kind of like uh tight smile i have no idea how i'm gonna solve this there's like my eyes you see my eyes kind of light up and there's this (laughs) There's this moment where we're on the same wavelength of like, well, we have no we have no idea what we're doing. We have absolutely no clue. Let's see if we can just bullshit our way into a solution. Yeah, hashtag bullshit our way into a solution. I think that I think there is this there is this moment where like that is the thing. That is the thing that bonds us is this sense of <laughs> the idea of not knowing what we're doing is fucking thrilling. <laughs> tight all right cool um so you go off together to solve the problems of both your uh, both our peoples as you're like walking out of earshot distance of of the of the common folk uh sandra kind of leans in and she's like so like how should we approach this thing like like physically approach this thing not like figuratively oh i was also thinking figuratively because i also have no idea about that but um Here's what I think we're going to do. And I I, I, I kind of like kick the edge of my, my, my staff. I grab it in both hands. I think that we're going to take two approaches here. Because I think what happens is like we see kind of one of these tentacles overhead. And it's kind of there's all kinds of like swore like souls and like ghostly shapes. And sometimes it forms into a full apparition of like a, a person kind of flies out from one section of a tentacle <laughs> into like the main body. And I'm like, OK, here's what I'm. I'm thinking if I'm thinking if if we can get to your point physically close enough, do you think that maybe you could this is I'm asking you a lot. I'm asking you a lot here, and so feel free to shoot this plan down. But I also secretly kinda think that I know that you're not going to do that, which is great. This is what I want. <laughs> if I can get you close, do you think that maybe you could talk to Charm? I'm not going to say seduce. I'm going to leave that on the table for you. That is for that is for you to decide with the vibes in the moment. Do you think you could talk to one of these ghosts and maybe get it to communi- commune with the larger hive mind entity and see if you can maybe like get it to move? 
Does that sound like a completely nonsensical plan? She takes a deep breath, which involves a lot of inhaling of bubbles since you are both underwater and holds it as she is obviously thinking and, and just looking at the apparition of, of deconstructed or constructed um, souls. Uh, yeah, sure. You only live once. All right. All right. Look here. I, I like I said, I'm going to I'm going to try and get us. I'm going to get us close if it means if it means fighting off a tentacle or a. I guess a swarm of ghosts. I'm just going to say this outright. This is outside of my my comfort zone. This is outside of my area of familiarity. <laughs> I think at this point we're both just standing feet planted in the ground as this thing, as this swirling like soul squid is just like in front of us and a little bit above us. And we're just kind of looking up at it. Right. This is outside of my this is outside of my my territory, my 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 comfort zone. But I think if I can get you close, you can probably you're. You're much better at talking to people than I am. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe you can talk to some of these ghosts and I think that maybe reach some degree of an understanding. All right. So um, another way magic works in this game as a quick side note, because this is going to involve with what Sandra does, is that to cast spells in this game, you uh, use aptitude, which is, as we said er um, earlier, is the Disney princess skill. So it's by singing, dancing, or playing an instrument. And in this case, even though... Sandra is a hardcore um, non-toxic bro. The way she casts Inferno spells is like kind of like almost like words are failing me. So I'm going to say it's like almost like Gregorian chanting almost. Mm. I like that. I really love that. Yeah. So um, she is going to um, put on that tight fake it till you make it smile, put her hands on her hips and say, get me close. We're going to we're going to rock this thing. And I spread my wings wide and I kind of like uh, I think I spread my wings wide and I kind of start like twirling the staff in one hand and I finally just like latch it down, like grasp it. I like I hold out my arm for her to grab or like wrap around because I'm like, D we're <laughs> we're taking flight. Are you ready? Ready. <sighs> can I can I let you in on a secret from front? Not for problem solver to problem solver. Yeah, buddy. What's up? I love this part. And I like spread my <laughs> wings and kick off. And we both just we both just zip straight towards us. And there are tentacles kind of lashing down. And every time a tentacle kind of like strikes the ground, a swarm of like ghosts kind of just swirl around and they don't look angry. They look kind of serene, right? Like they are not they're not uh, silhouettes. So they're kind of just entities they're kind of just beings that 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 were alive and were are no longer so they're kind of just like floating almost like um, fish like i actually now that i'm thinking we're underwater i'm picturing like a school of fish but they're ghosts cool um but it crashes down well swarms of these and like as it happens i kind of I'm taking swipes with the with the staff and quick stabs and like they kind of dissolve into ghost around us as I'm like trying to get us as narrowly close as possible to kind of the core of this squid kind of the the beak body thing. Cool. All right. The 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 um, not quite belly of the beast because that would be opposite progress. That'd be backwards progress if we were in the belly. All right. If it has one. All right. So, um you get her in as close as possible and she starts doing her thing. And I did not specify what background she has. So we're going to say that she's probably primal. And if this was like a modern game, like her, her like belly of the volcano house probably would have a selfie of every person she's diplomated for or with on it. So she is a, she is a, a primal um, chameleon diplomat. She is mm -hmm. hardcore rouge realm ethics so while she can only do um cantrip spells since she has that plus one um to her skill which is aptitude for being from the rouge realm she she belts it out it sounds gorgeous and calming and if it if it was like in a place of worship it would fill the entire fucking room mm -hmm. no matter the acoustics and i think that the the really cool thing is like the tentacles are kind of around us and they're very, very big, right? Like one of these, every one of these tentacles is like the size of a, of a, of a room of a house, right? right. Like it's in diameter. So like 
there are moments where we very much are kind of in an enclosed space because a tentacle has like come down behind us. So we get those, we hear those moments of like echoing off of walls and it is this very cool kind of moment as I like pull us closer when we finally start to get closer to that like central, uh, central body where we kind of see all of these souls are swirling around and swirling and swirling closer and closer. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, so she's belt, she's belting it out. But, um, the problem is, is after doing the math of her, um, uh emotional endurance and that probably like the fake it till you make it um session probably you know pinged her emotional pain a bit Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh um she is obviously starting to she's obviously preoccupied at this point and her voice is starting to crack because the size of this thing and being surrounded by that is kind of freaking her out a little bit so i think um, how you usually um, cure emotional pain is by like hanging out with someone you like or um, or doing an activity you enjoy. So I think that she could probably use some help from what she thinks is her buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, I, yeah, I absolutely love that. And I love that. I, I love that it kind of happens. I picture that it kind of happens like, Right at that kind of big climax moment where like we're close and and your voice is kind of giving out at the exact worst moment. And like I'm I'm swatting at ghosts. I'm 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 brushing ghosts aside and I see you kind of start to start to wear out. And like at this point, you're kind of floating in the water behind me and I kind of pause and I look around and I'm I'm swatting, I'm swinging and I kind of like I'm floating and I'm looking I'm lo- seeing the 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 squid's beak in one direction and you right behind me in the other and I finally kind of float back and I'm like talk to me, tell me how you're feeling. We can we can we can we can do this. Just sit and like as I'm kind of give talk, giving this kind of calming talk, I'm kind of swatting at the the ghosts around <laughs> us to keep distance, but I'm like Talk to me. Just focus on me. Focus on your friend. Focus on Lancer. Tell me what's on your mind. This this is out of my league, bro. This is this isn't a, a room f- like f- full of angry people in a tavern. This isn't a bunch of rich people screaming at each other. This is like some big fucking thing. It's <sighs> yes, it is. Okay, it is terrifying. I'm not going to mince words. This is a this is a waking nightmare that I will never fully forget. <laughs> uh, but I want but I want to tell you that. Okay, I want to tell you this. If there was anyone in either, and I kind of point down, and we're we're far enough ahead that I kind of in one gesture point at the volcano and at the coral reef. If there was anyone in either of these two spaces that I felt could. If there's anybody that I believed had the power to speak to this entity, it would be the person that I respect more than anyone else in either of those two spaces. Get out of here! Then not at you, that was at the ghost. I just want that to be clear. <laughs> uh, her eyes get real big when you say the R word. <laughs> like, senpai noticed me almost, but not quite, because you're, you're, not, you're not her senpai. Mm-hmm. She, like, makes a motion like she's rolling up her sleeves, even though she doesn't have sleeves on. And she takes another big breath. They see the bubbles um, getting sucked into her sucked into her lungs. Well, into her mouth, because you can't see her lungs. And her, um, she kind of, like, starts glowing, like the, like the, like the lava escaping the, the, the crust of the earth. And she, um, uh, chants louder like than you ever have heard her chant before and it's almost like the time you were you and her were working together and it was like it was like it wasn't like you and and her versus a giant squid and a bunch of people that are either care more about their clam bake or more about grabbing their pitchfork it was like you know people mm-hmm. were gonna die you know if you the two of you didn't cool people's jets and the encroaching beak kind of pauses for a moment and like just 
and like still like slightly agape it's like like almost like it's listening and the tentacles that were like sort of like half uh swatting at you half just existing in your space kind of like pause in mid tentacleness and some of the spirits start drifting away um how is lancer uh whirlpool act reacting to this I'm mouth and jaw and tiny physical detail is I picture that I have kind of a mustache, but it's kind of a like a man of war mustache. So it's all the little tiny spindly things <laughs> that have formed kind of a big bushy mustache. It's just the detail that I have that I think is very important. Mouth, ag- mouth agape watching this and kind of like eyes wide face turning into a smile as I look around and I see that the kind of the, the beak is kind of open. And like I kind of I, I look for sort of the the eye structure. I I I imagine that like there's like two kind of glowing points. And as you're singing, like you 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 kind of reach the end of this song, and it's just very still. And I finally kind of float with my wings a little bit to the right, and I watch the eyes kind of go drift in my direction, and I float back to the left. And I sit and I I look out at you and I look back at the squid and I just, I go, okay, well, phase one was a success. I think I see what phase two has to be. And I, 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 I float back towards you, wings still spread wide, and I like extend out my, my, my Urgrosh in your direction. I kind of push it into your chest a little bit. I'm like, take this, you're going to need it. Need it for what? Uh, I don't know, fighty stuff. Yeah, it's 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 real scare. Like, hold on, hold on. I kind of, I before I do it, I'm like, is it cool if I is it cool if I grab your arms real quick? Is it cool if I if I cool if I I do that? I don't want to. Yeah, bro, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. So I kind of wrap your hand around it and I put it to the side and I put your other hand on your hip and I'm like, and bring out your bring bring your shoulders back a little. Look look how you're how you're standing right now. You look extremely cool and intimidating, and I want you to remember this pose. Uh, okay. I'm going to be gone for a while. And I need you to do, in your head, I need you to think about all the things that you've seen me do around the reef and also around the volcano, and I need you to do those things for a while. Can you do that for me? Yeah, bro totes. Okay. I will be back. With that in mind... And I never thought I would say these words. It has been a pleasure, my friend. Her eyes glow like um, the color of magma for a bit when you say the F word. Not not the <laughs> F bomb, the F word. <laughs> um, uh, but then like they, they kind of dim where, when her brain's like, wait a second, wait a second. And she's like, but where are you going? And I kind of float backwards and I'm like, I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and if you break my, if you break my, my Urgrosh, that's the name of it, by the way, you got, it's, Ur, if people ask, it's an Urgrosh. If you break it, if you break it, we're going to duel, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to draw the circle and we're going to duel and you will face my full wrath. Just to be clear. And I float back and you see the eyes of the squid follow me and finally like I swirl, I fly up and you, you know, the beak and all the tentacles fly up around you and suddenly you're in open water and you see this little like flash of blue just zip down the water and the squid very kind of slowly, right? Like big, big, big boat moves slowly, kind of tilt upward and start to float in the same general direction that I'm floating in. Okay. As I, as I lead this thing back towards the, back towards the deep water from whence it came, now that it has kind of been charmed and it's listening to us, I'd love to float it off, float it off, towards parts unknown okay wow that was deep all right so what is what is what does sandy do in this what does sandy do in this moment what is the what is kind of the the closing beat of our of, of this scene of our of the chapter of our story look like um she looks at the um the weapon you've given her and holds it a little tighter and it gets a glow to it like like hot glass but like not enough to damage it because she remembered what you said but it and it, but it kind of gives it like a perma glow and you might have to deal with that when you get it back but it's not damaged 
I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And she kind of like turns slowly, like, you know, so she can watch you fade away into the distance because that's how water works and uh, walks back towards um, where the two of you left the two bundles of, of, of people's. And I think uh, I think you come down and sort of the the two kind of groups kind of gather around you, right? Like the sort of elder blue uh, court is kind of baffled, but they kind of look at your they look at the the they look at the pike and they're very confused. But there's a moment of recognition and they watch the like all of you, like the rouge and the blue and you kind of watch this dot of light and this gigantic squid float off into the distance. And I think for now, I think that might be game. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, so this is uh, usually the part because I, I I am a huge fan of epilogues. Got to um, got to do a got to do an ep- got to do an epilogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in, in this and at which you know epilogue slash how does the world react to what you do? But um, I will let you. Go, um, do you have something in mind? No. If you've got if you've got a, if you've got thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Well, um, how long is it until um, Lancer returns, or does he ever return? I, I, I am going to say definitively that he does return because partially because I want to revisit these characters some point down the road. But like, <laughs> I do love the visual of him coming back and like maybe coming back. I, I think coming back and having different wings. Oh, I, I think it. the wings, the wings are. Spec. The wings are no longer metal. They're kind of spectral and like inky, and they kind oh, of float. They kind of look translucent and almost liquid, like squid ink, and that kind of floaty. Like if you picture squid ink in the water, where it's kind of like taking this sort of abstract shape, and they're half kind of translucent, and they they at times they kind of appear more metal, but they kind of float into this ghostly form. They kind of float back and forth. I finally do come back, and I touch down. And I kind of like half limp, half walk back towards the back towards the the volcano and the and the reef, and I just kind of like look around. Um, has it been a while, or or do you or does 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 he not know? I'm not sure he knows. How, I think it has been a long time, but it, how long? I don't think he knows. Okay. Uh, maybe not like maybe not like years year like I don't think it's been like ten years or a hundred. Like I don't think it's been decades or whatever, but I think it has been. At the very least, like months, like it has been like a long journey to get to a place where this squid was calls home. Okay, um, you um, luckily do not see an angry mob or a bunch of disinterested uh, party goers, um, but you do see a um, li- like a little um, a little stand that wasn't there before. That's kind of like um, in between uh, both locations. Um, and they seem to have a bunch of, um, like frozen popsicle almost things. And the, the vendor looks at you and smiles and they have this, uh, like, uh, well-brushed side ponytail and kind eyes and say, um, you like, um, you looks like you could use some refreshment. Sit, sit, sit here for a bit. Understood. This is new. This is exciting. What's uh what's what's this situation all about? I'm I'm just here visiting and they offer you a a very bougie looking uh popsicle. It's very ref- looks very refreshing. Oh, fancy. This is not my usual treat. This is nice. Uh they they smile with their eyes and say, "Um, you look like you're from around here, but also not from around here." <sighs> I I like to think I well I I am from around here or I was from around here once I I it's been a long time coming but I'm finally home. Uh, um, they um, uh, touch your hand gently and smile and say, um, they've missed you. Well, that's good. Uh, where can I find them? Um. They point in the direction of a, um, w- uh, what looks to be some sort of place where you can, um, g- uh, get food that was also not there before, but it looks like it, it's, it's been there for a while. 
<laughs> well, things have things have changed. I, maybe I I think for the better. We got fancy. We got fancy frozen treats. We got new <laughs> restaurants. Uh, well, I, I, you said you you said you're just visiting, but I hope you're here long enough for me to get a second serving because this is uh outstanding. I will be back. Don't sell out the rest of your inventory. I will be back if you save me one. Face my wrath, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they smile again in that way, and and the the, the smile it it kind it, it kind of like like half unnerves you and half makes you it feels soothing. It's a weird situ- a weird feeling, and they say, "Of course, little seahorse." And I I think I I I think I take the form of the seahorse as I float over to this uh over to this this restaurant, kind of retake my retake my other form uh. Because sometimes you just gotta show off a little bit. Totes. I, I take I I, I I I walk in, I wrap my my wings around myself, and now they kind of take on the appearance of like a weathered, torn up cloak, rather than sort of the metal plates around my chest as I kind of walk in and I look around and see if I see any familiar faces. You see some people from your neighborhood and some of the folks from the um who live around the um, submarine volcanoes kind of huddled around a person who has their feet up crossed on the table and is telling some, some story about how they outdid the, the Vicerine of the Rouge realm in a, um, in a keg off where they are, instead of shotgunning beers, they're literally punching into kegs and chugging them. And you hear laughter from both sides of the, of the, of the neighborhood. I hear this story and I just put my head in my hands and I, I calmly and quietly walk over and like the crowd and like still hidden from the crowd. I just shout out. I swear if the, if my Urgrosh is broken, you and I are going to have a duel. Are we going to have a duel? Um, the crowd kind of parts because they, they they're in uh, while like looking at you agape and shocked and you see um. Sandra sitting at the table and uh, she points above her and there is a, um, a, we- a, a weapon display that just has your, your Urgrosh and nothing else. And she's, and she kind of smiles, but her, her smiles a bit more hard than now. And she says, I don't know. You tell me. All right. That one's on me. You got me with this one. Uh, so what, is, so what is there? What is there to get a returning traveler to get a drink around here? My friend, I believe we are owed some celebratory cocktails. Yeah, you hear some some cheers, mostly from the Rouge side, obviously. Realm. I look over towards the Blue Realm, and I kind of like, what, what? I that's that's the best that I get. You, uh, I don't even know how to handle you sometimes. Drinks, <laughs> drinks, drinks. Cool. And I think we we clink glasses, and I think that we we see that the we see this we clink glasses, and we get kind of a montage of celebration shots of us drinking and laughing and wrestling a little bit. But I think like we do, we have this moment of genuine real friendship. Cool. And uh, the camera cuts to the uh, lone popsicle stand, and they smile upon hearing the 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 happy chatter. Uh, and 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 alcohol flowing and they kind of um they uh kind of like unpark their um their little stand and we start wheeling it off and as they uh wheel it off into the distance it, they kind of turn turn translucent um uh, until they come it, it, they become completely water and disappear oh i love it what a good what a good closing shot i'm i'm very happy with how this turned out um so that's game. That's game. Oh, this this was an absolute delight. Thank you so much for playing this with me. I had the best time. Yay! I'm glad you did. I had fun too. This was this was a nice little like little boop one shot. I loved it. This was this was this was fantastic. Absolutely delightful. <sighs> so, real quick before we wrap up, where can people find you, your work, and Prism Online? Uh, they can find me on at Whittle Dragon um at Twitter um w-i-d-d-l-e dragon and they can find my work um on littlewishproductions.com which is where you can find where you can purchase the book and um get character sheets i am in the process of um, working on a second print run of prison because i'm almost out of physical stock but 
the deets on how to get that will come at a later date. <laughs> Understood. Well, thank you so much for playing this with me. I had the absolute best time. And for now, I am going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it, future me. Thanks, Bass Me. And thanks again to Whitney for coming on the show. That game was just delightful and fun. And I loved getting to, like, explore this world a little bit and play out these uh, stories and meet these characters. I really just had a wonderful time with it. You should absolutely head to littlewishproductions.com to learn more about Prism or check the show notes for more information. And follow Whitney on Twitter at Whittle Dragon. Then while you're on Twitter, follow us at Party of One Pod. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review, a Podchaser review, a Spotify review. All of those services have reviews. You can also tell a friend about the show. You can, you know, give us some love on social media. All of these things help new listeners find the show, which helps us do bigger, better, and cooler things. You can also financially support the show at patreon.com slash jeffstormer and get ad-free access to episodes, early access to episodes, behind-the-scenes audio, and exclusive audio content such as... Party of None, which is a Patreon-exclusive actual play podcast focused exclusively on single-player role-playing games. Jeff Stormer, Podcaster for Hire, the early edition, which is a Patreon-exclusive for now actual play of Characters Welcome, where I play Jeff Stormer trying to solve very much not podcast-related mysteries. And more. You can find more information at patreon.com slash jeffstormer or ko-fi.com slash jeffstormer. If you enjoyed this episode and want to talk about it with us or you feel like talking about gritty or pro wrestling or any number of other things, uh, head to bit.ly slash party of one discord to join our discord community and hang out with us. And lastly, if you really enjoyed the show and you'd like a t-shirt with a logo on it or you think the future me past me bit remains funny after seven years or you just truly believe that Champ and Crowbar are in love because Champ and Crowbar are very much in love, you can head to bit.ly slash party of one merch to check out our merch store. If you're looking for another podcast to enjoy, might I recommend All My Fantasy Children to you? It is a character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast on the One Shot Podcast Network, where every week, my best friend Aaron Catano Saez and I take a listener-submitted prompt. We spin it into an original fantasy character and populate a shared universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday, dish, at oneshotpodcast.com. Party of One is, as always, produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. Music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Mega Rain featuring the D&D Sluggers, and the Party of One logo is by Evan Rowland. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates coming onto the show as a guest or about press coverage of the show, you can email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And finally, before we wrap things up, one last reminder to check out the Patreon and Ko-fi pages. That's patreon.com slash jeffstormer and ko-fi.com slash jeffstormer starting October 1st. For our annual pledge drive, like I said, we're going to have some cool stuff rolling out, some exclusive content, some milestone goals, including crossover episodes, sequel Party of One episodes, live shows, and other cool stuff. Um, All of that is going to be in an effort to pay our guests more and pay ourselves for our time. That is patreon.com slash jeffstormer and ko-fi.com slash jeffstormer. And I think... That is all we do here. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. 